Dear friends, a very good morning and may God bless all of you. May the Holy Spirit enlighten the understanding of all of you so that all of you may understand His will for their life. And once a person understands His will and applies, obeys the will of God, then they will harvest the fruits of obedience, which are the blessings of God. Pay attention. I was meditating about the meaning of God's righteousness by faith, by faith, not by works, but by faith, due to the faith, we are saved through faith, and faith is something that you do not feel you obey because you believe, you believe, and therefore you embrace that belief in that word. So see what God says, what God says, as I live, says the Lord God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. And he says more, the righteousness of the righteous man shall not deliver him in the day of his transgression. As for the wickedness of the wicked, he shall not fall because of it in the day that he turns from his wickedness nor shall the righteous be able to live because of his righteousness in the day that he sings. And he says more, when I say to the righteous that he shall surely live, but he trusts in his own righteousness and commits iniquity, None of his righteous works shall be remembered, but because of the iniquity that he has committed, he shall die. Again, when I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, if he turns from his sin and does what is lawful and right, if the wicked restores the pledge gives back what he has stolen and walks in the statutes of life without committing iniquity, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Meaning that none of his sins which he has committed shall be remembered against him. He has done what is lawful and right, he shall surely live. So this here, dear friends, if you read with care and attention, meditating on it, this text is very glorious, it's magnificent, because what the Lord says here is exactly that. It's pointless to do a lot of work, you know, good works of charity, being merciful, you know, that I myself can do, preaching the gospel, dedicating my entire life to try and save others and pass on to others what God has given me, if in the last moment of my life I think that I have the right of salvation because I've done the work of God, then I already be sinning and I'll be I will be punished with eternal death. This means that I have to keep my faith 
every single day, depending exclusively on the compassion of my Lord Jesus, who died for me, who paid the price for my salvation, I have to live in this faith and to live according to His word, to His righteousness and His character. If in the last moment I deny such faith, then it's over. I will lose my salvation. However, on the other hand, if the person sinned throughout the whole life, they lived in sin, in a righteous lifestyle, they were wicked, evil, cruel, during the whole life. But if in the last moment of their life, they recognize Jesus as the Lord of their life and ask for forgiveness, in the last moment, they will be forgiven and they will be saved. Which means that God is fair, dear friends. He is perfectly righteous. He reaches out His hands towards everyone. You who are watching me now and you feel disoriented and lost, you don't know what to do with your life. You find yourself at the bottom of the pit. You have no one to cry out to. Then there is your great opportunity to turn, to return to your first love or to start in your first love with Jesus. When you return to Him and you say, Lord, have mercy on me, have mercy on my soul, then God will save you. That is the message of the cross for all of us. And this happened when Jesus was hanging on the cross between two thieves and they were both cursing against him. Well, you, you saved so many people and now you are there dying like, like us. Save yourself first. Jesus heard that from both of them. However, as the hours went by, one of those thieves recognized that there was a righteous man who didn't deserve what he was going through. And he then turned to Jesus and said, Lord, have mercy on me. Remember me when you enter paradise. And in that moment, Jesus answered straight away, Today you are going to be with me in paradise. And he was a thief. He was a criminal as much as the other one. However, he was saved at the last moment. Actually, I want to leave a special message here to everyone, those who want salvation, of course. In the last moment of your life, when you reach the last moment, because one day we will reach the last moment of our lives, isn't it? The last moment will come for all of us, except if Jesus comes back sooner, then He will take us. But if it doesn't happen, and in the moment that you are, you know, you're about to go, you're about to die, in that moment, and you remember Jesus, you remember like the thief on the cross did who cried out to Jesus in his last moment and he was saved, you can do that as well. And the Lord has been giving an opportunity to many people. As I mentioned here before, some time ago, there was a lady who came to church two or three times and her problem was not resolved. So she jumped off the fifth floor from the apartment she lived. But before she died, she was 
for a few minutes, you know, aware, conscious, but in pain there on the pavement. And many people are actually seeing her, watching her. And in that moment, she cried out to Jesus. And in that moment, she had around 10 minutes, you know, before she died. And in those 10 minutes of agony and pain, she cried out to Jesus because she knew that whoever cried upon the name of Jesus would be saved. So she cried upon his name. She died, but her countenance was calm, was peaceful. No longer the countenance of someone who is suffering. The countenance she had in the moment she died was the kind of countenance she wished to have when she was still alive. But she only received that peace in the last moment of her life when she cried out to the Lord. So it's good for you to know this because, for example, I had a brother who was in coma for many months due to a certain infirmity. And I believe, I believe that God allowed him to be in that situation, you know, in coma, so that he, still being conscious, he could cry out to Jesus and then be saved. I believe that he was saved because he knew about the truth. He knew the truth. Therefore, dear friends, if this ever happens to you in your last moment, take advantage of it. You don't have to deserve anything in order to be saved. No one is saved by personal merit, but by the merit of the Lord Jesus. And when we trust in the Lord Jesus with our lives, with our soul, oh my Lord, I'm living here, the last moment of my life, I know I'm going to die, I can feel it now. I want to give my soul to you. I recognize you as my Savior. In that, in that last moment, do that. And in that moment, you shall be saved. You lived your whole life in sin, but if in the last moment you cry out to the Lord Jesus, you shall be saved. Whereas a person can live the whole life in church, in faith, and doing charity, good works. But if in the last moment of their life they deny the Lord Jesus, they will also lose their soul. And their soul will be condemned for all eternity. So I'd like all of you to have this understanding that no one will forget this because one day, sooner or later, we are all going to die. We are all going to go to eternity. But before we do so, before we enter eternity, let us trust our soul to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, because He gave His soul to rescue ours. And when we express faith in Him, in what He's done on the cross, then we are saved. Okay? May God bless all of you. And don't forget, from this Wednesday, or this Wednesday actually, they study about the armor of God, which keeps us protected against the loss of the greatest loss we can experience, which is our salvation. God bless you, and I'll see you tomorrow in Jesus' name. Amen.